Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the folks from Craigsbank Parish Church and Kastorfen Old Parish Church. My name is Alan Childs and I'm a minister with Craigsbank Parish Church here in the western part of Edinburgh. As we are leading up to Easter and Holy Week, I invite you to join in with this time of reflection. If you'd like to sing along or to listen to our first hymn, you're welcome to do so. Our scripture reading today is taken from John chapter 12. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. 
Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, whilst others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. Oh, the difficulty of giving up something precious, something you hold dear. It's yours after all. Whether it's a beloved pastime like watching Wimbledon unfold in your living room, or something potentially harder to relinquish like smoking or gossiping, especially if it feels like it's part of your identity or jumping in your car less often and rather catching the bus or the train. Why give it up, you ask? It's our choice, right? And who would dare dictate our preferences? Especially if something has become a habit. Take me, for instance. I adore catching up on the weekend's Premier League goals with match of the day on Sunday nights. It's become a bit of a ritual over the years. A bit amusing, a bit mindless, but undeniably enjoyable. I just have to remember to keep the volume down because the rest of the house is asleep by half 11 on a Sunday. These are choices, habits, whether good or bad. But what if you are asked to surrender something that isn't a preference? What if it's something ingrained from childhood by parents or your cultural background? Imagine being told to stop being racist or bigoted or sexist. Or stopping being an unbridled consumer or an unthinking waste discarder. We aren't born that way. We are raised that way. So in theory we can change those traits uh, that might have been normalized over the years. Admittedly learning what once seemed normal to unlearn it could be a struggle. Thankfully, self-reflection and being open to constructive criticism allow us to right these wrongs within our own moral and habitual universe. Change, especially moral or ethical change, is rarely easy. It demands growing beyond our subjective worldview. To truly mature, we have to move beyond instant gratification and desires that bring only temporary comfort or security. Remember the heartwarming British sitcom Gavin and Stacey? It follows Gavin from Essex and Stacey from Wales, a couple navigating their cultural differences. Both learn to appreciate and adapt to each other's backgrounds and families. The show celebrates compromise and understanding. 
It showcases moral growth through open-mindedness and acceptance. Another favorite, Fleabag, cleverly explores the complexities of personal growth. The dry-witted protagonist, Fleabag, grapples with grief and trauma initially, presenting as cynical and self-destructive. However, as the series progresses, she confronts her past mistakes and cultivates a healthier set of relationships. Growth, for her, just like for us, requires letting go sometimes. In the case of the main characters in both these series, growth, though sometimes painful, leads to something positive. And what motivates the characters? What gives them the internal motivation to drive, to grow through the changes required? The characters are motivated by love. Love for someone outside themselves, but also the love they receive in return. A love that sees them for who they truly are. It might be romantic love, but there's a willingness to change for the better. They recognize their potential and want to be better, not just for the other person, but for themselves, for they are worthy of more than they sometimes believe, and they realize that. Kind of like Melvin in the iconic film As Good As It Gets, who when praising his soon-to-be girlfriend, clumsily yet vulnerably admits about his mental health medication that he really hates to take it. When he says, I started taking the pills. Why? Because you make me want to be a better man. You see, we wrestle with letting go of things that we hold dear. But consider this. Jesus, the divine Son of God, existed in perfect glory and oneness with the Father. Yet the Bible tells us in our reading of today that when Jesus says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This glorification wasn't about earthly power or a claim. It was about a love so immense, so all-encompassing that it compelled him to give up everything. Imagine the magnitude of his choice. He didn't cling to his divine status, but as Philippians chapter 2 says, he nullified himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. And he walked among us, not to be served, but to serve. His ministry overflowed with compassion, healing the sick, forgiving the lost, and offering love to the ostracized. He grew past himself to become the ultimate blessing for others, blessing to each of us. But the ultimate letting go came on the cross. Here, the sinless Christ became sin for us. He gave up his wholeness to take on himself our brokenness. He endured excruciating pain and humiliation and misunderstanding, not for personal gain, but out of his boundless love for you and me. By offering himself as a sacrifice, Jesus bridged the gap between us and God, paving the way for forgiveness and for reconciliation and hope and real peace. This is the essence of true grace, undeserved love, a love freely given. Jesus' love wasn't a fleeting emotion. It was a commitment, a willingness to let go of his heavenly glory and endure unimaginable suffering 
for the sake of humanity. And that is a sacrifice made out of love. So when Jesus asks us to be willing to take up our cross, to follow him by example, when Jesus asks us to be willing to lay down what we hold most dear, it is, it's a mere shadow of the awesome riches and glory and the state that he gave up for our sake. His is the perfect example of what it means to be godlike, to surrender our self centeredness in, in love and in service. Jesus' love was a staggering reality. In John chapter 12, Jesus declares that whoever loves his life will lose it, but whoever gives up his life will have life eternal life and here lies the essence of following Christ it's it's not about blind obedience or empty rituals it's about a response to the overwhelming love Jesus displayed on the cross it's about recognizing the things in our lives that separate us from God and others and choosing to let them go maybe it's a cherished vice, a judgmental attitude, or an unwillingness to forgive. Whatever it is, taking up our cross means surrendering these things in light of Jesus' sacrifice. This doesn't mean a life devoid of joy or fulfillment. Quite the contrary. By letting go of what hinders us, we open ourselves to a deeper, more meaningful existence. We become instruments of God's love, extending compassion and forgiveness and community to those around us. Following Christ is a continuous journey of growth, a process of shedding the old and embracing the new. It's about aligning our lives with Jesus' teachings of love and service and sacrifice. The path may not be easy, but the reward is immeasurable. As we reflect on Jesus' sacrifice, let us commit to taking up our own crosses, whatever they may be. And let us allow his love to transform us, to guide us towards a life of purpose, and service, both to God and to our fellow human beings. Because in doing so, we not only honor his incredible gift, but also experience the joy and the fulfillment that comes from living a life truly centered on love. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear God, we come to you as the one whose love is perfect and whose justice is fair. We come to you as the one who is the beginning and the end. We come to you with hearts burdened by the brokenness and pain in our world, yet filled with hope in your unfailing love and power to bring healing and restoration. Today, we lift up our prayers of intercession, trusting in your mercy and compassion. First, we pray for the healing of broken family relationships. Lord, we ask for reconciliation and forgiveness to mend the bonds that have been strained or broken. Heal wounds, mend hearts, and bring families back together in love and unity. We cry out today for the suffering people of Gaza. Amidst the turmoil and violence, Lord, bring an end to the conflict and the suffering. How long? Comfort those who mourn, heal the wounded, and bring hope to the hopeless. Bring about justice and peace in the region and guide leaders towards reconciliation and understanding. Father, today we acknowledge 
the urgent need for healing of the ecology amidst the global climate emergency. Help us, as stewards of your creation, to care for the earth with wisdom and responsibility. Grant us the courage to take action to mitigate the effects of global warming and to protect the environment for future generations. During this month of Ramadan, we pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters that you may reveal yourself to them in profound ways. Draw them closer to you. Reveal your love and truth to their hearts and lead them into a deeper relationship with you. We also lift up the people in Ukraine, where war has destroyed peace and civility. Lord, we pray for the restoration of peace, justice, and reconciliation in the region. Protect the innocent, comfort the afflicted, and please put an end to the evil. And so today we pray to you in the words of Jesus Christ as he taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Oh